Give it up for Will Miles, everybody. Hi, everybody. Has anybody ever worked temp before? No. <laughs> it's good. Uh, give it up for Charles and Nick, everybody. Funny people. Very funny. You getting pictures of my hair? Because it's really good. It's real nice. I know it. Uh, I am one of the gentrifiers in Brooklyn. Shout out to all of you guys. We're doing it. All right? You're very pretty. How are you? I'm Will, nice to meet you. Cool. All right, that's it, guys. <laughs> Good night. Um, now I live in Bushwick. Any Bushwickites? That's the, that's the word now. Bushwickians. It's nice. Bushwick is like half gentrified, and so am I. So I feel like we get each other. <laughs> we totally understand each other. This hair is half gentrified. It's obvious. Uh, I like it though, because you can walk outside of my door and see all the gentrification just like right outside of my door. It's great. Like I walked out the other day, I saw two dudes in a fist fight. Uh, and they may or may not have been Puerto Rican. Um, actually, I'm, I'm sure they were Puerto Rican. We talked about it later. But, uh, <laughs> but they were in a fight. They had tattoos on their face, their neck, and their chest. And I know that because they had no shirts on. It was like 35 degrees out. But it was a great fight. I walked out. I was like, holy shit, this is a dope-ass fight. These guys are fighting. This is great. Then I walked like a half a block the other way. And I had probably the best brunch I've ever had <laughs> in my entire life. Like, I had lobster eggs. I don't even know if that's a thing, but it's delicious. I strongly suggest Fritzl's Lunchbox. Uh, boysenberry pancakes. What the fuck is a boysenberry? It's great. I saw another cool thing. I was, I was walking down the street. I saw a man get in an argument with a policeman. And I'm originally from Chicago, so like I don't get to see that all the time because people die. So <laughs> it's cool to watch out here and nothing happens because this dude, he was, in a, he was like yelling at him. He started out the conversation with a cop by saying, fuck you. So I was instantly like, ooh, let me pull out my earbuds. This is good. And he kept going. He was like, hey, man, fuck you, fuck you. You think I don't know the law? I know the law. If you walk across this street, I'll fuck you up. Said that to a cop. And I don't think that dude knew the law at all. <laughs> At all. I'm pretty sure I would have heard about that if that was a thing. Like, well, did you rob that bank? Yeah, it's cool. I crossed the street, dog. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is up. <laughs> I got generalized recently, or stereotyped, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a thing. I grew up black. I'm still black today, so I'm, I'm doing it for us, you know? The ones who remain. Some of us turn Puerto Rican. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> I thought about going Dominican living in Bushwick, but I'm staying black. It's the hair, too. Uh, but no, I, I, I like it. I, I got, usually it's like a, a regular stereotype, like, you know, big dick good at basketball. That's all true, but I was walking, <laughs> I was walking down the street, and I got the weirdest stereotype. Like, I'm walking, and it hits one of those points in the street where everybody stops walking, and you don't really know what's going on. Like, everybody just left the train. And everybody in front of me kind of looked a little bit similar, I guess. And this old black dude behind us just yells out out of nowhere. He just goes, hey, y'all better tighten up or loosen up, because I got to get the fuck by which is an awesome thing to yell. <laughs> like, it's a lot of new phrases I'm gonna try out, it's awesome. But then he just looks me in my eyes and goes, I hate y'all goddamn Asians. <laughs> I was a little confused. But I just looked at him, I was like, hey man, you can't talk to us like that. <laughs> and he was like, us? And I was like, eh. <laughs> They seem like nice people, I wanna be a part of something cool. Stop yelling at me. Uh, it's hard. I'm trying to figure out more about race. I got in this argument with this African girl on New Year's Eve. Like, we were flirting for a long time, and I'm so good at flirting that it led to an argument. <laughs> and we were talking, and at some point in the night, she thought that she was way blacker than me. So she yells at me. She's like, I'm way blacker than you. I may be from London, but my whole family is from Morocco. I am way blacker than you. And I just looked at her. I was like, well, that's cool. But I'm from Chicago. And I have absolutely no idea about my family history. So I'm way blacker than you. I'm so black, I might be Chinese. This guy was convinced earlier that I was. I want to find out more, but I, it's hard for, for black people. I tried to use Ancestry.com. It didn't work. It just went back a couple hundred years, and then it just said boat. And then my computer exploded. It was kind of the worst thing ever. It's like, fuck me for learning my history. Uh, is anybody in love? Are you guys in love or is your head just randomly on his shoulder? <laughs> You're in love? Cool, man. Anybody else in love? 
Anybody is single, especially if you're maybe one of the four ladies in the front row? Um, you guys single? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> answer me. No, uh, I am single in New York right now. I broke up with a girl about eight months ago. Uh, it was a sad thing. That, that's my story. Her story is that she moved to San Francisco and we never actually dated, but you know. <laughs> she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about, so I'm out here. <laughs> The single life. It's cool. I'm in an open relationship. It's going pretty well. It's uh, an open relationship that's completely non-sexual. <laughs> a lot of people just call that a friendship, but I don't really like labels like that. It's a lot of me throwing up at Tim's and her blocking him right down. She's like the Dikembe Mutombo of not fucking me. It's, uh, it's always... <laughs> not in my house. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> No, nah, it's great. I uh, I did lie to a girl not too long ago. I'm not proud of that. But uh, this dating life is weird, so sometimes you gotta lie. That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> did she say she wants to date me? You guys heard that, right? Uh, <laughs> fine, later. Uh, I am black, it's true. Uh, but no, I, I, I lied to a girl. It was 2 a.m. and things were going very smooth. I was, we had drinks and we had had Bali, so it was like a full date. And, uh, <laughs> And we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we're drinking, and somebody walks in the bar, and they kind of smell like weed. And she just looks at me and goes, ugh, I hate weed. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and I went out with this girl for like two weeks, and for two weeks, she believed I never smoked weed, and that I never said the N-word. And if you know me, those are like two of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I actually wake up every morning and look in the mirror and go, all right, nigga, let's do this. <laughs> Fun way to start your day. Try it out when I'm not around. Uh, also in college, I did try to start this fraternity called High Nigga Pie. That's a, it was worth a shot. I went to the board and everything. I was like, hey, I'd like to start this frat, please. High Nigga Pie, Will Miles, I'm a freshman, thanks. And the lady just looked at me. She was like, uh, nigga's not Greek. And I was like, you know what? You niggas are not Greek. <laughs> Starting this frat because I want to. I've already got a house. It's a brilliant house. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I want to I learn more about it. It's tough. I asked my nieces for advice. They're four. Uh, but they know a lot of shit, guys. Uh, shout out to my brothers in the crowd. They're his children. Uh, they're twins. Twins are cool. Twins are cool. I was supposed to be a twin myself, but I, uh, I killed that motherfucker in the womb. What up? Uh, it's the most gangster shit I've ever done. I wasn't having that shit, though. Get the fuck out of this vagina, man. It's mine. Say hello to the toilet. Uh, is that too dark? Because so is he. That's why he didn't fucking make it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm the only one here. <clears throat> nah, twins are cool. I like, I like hanging out with him. I babysit him because he gets high sometimes and forgets uh, <laughs> to not let me do that. But it's great. Like, I, I enjoy babysitting because they give me advice and like sometimes I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be babysitting and like they'll do something that makes me think they're much smarter than me, which is not cool because they're only four and I'm 30, but it happens. Like one time we were, I was chilling with them and I was like playing some Daft Punk music and my niece Lily just like starts doing the robot. She's like doing it right, everybody. I'm like, how the fuck do you know they're robots? That's cool. You're a genius. And uh, other times I'll ask them about like the girls I'm into and I'll just hold up a picture and be like, hey, should I hit this or what? That's <laughs> how so I talk to a four year old, it's fine. I'm like, should I fuck this girl? What do you think? And, uh, they usually give me responses. One time I showed them a girl, and uh, my niece River just looked at the girl and she was like, oh, this girl looks not nice, but I think that's kind of what you're into. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck did you know that? <laughs> you're right, but whatever. I don't know, I'm gonna find love. I watch romantic comedies every day, and uh, it's giving me advice. It's gonna help. I, I lost my virginity while watching Along Came Polly. It's a true story. Uh, it's a good movie, though. It was a great movie. I love romantic comedies. I watch them every day, and I do certain things in my daily life like those movies. So eventually, it'll help me find love. Like, one thing I do that's just like rom-coms, anytime I meet a girl for the first time, and I think she's really, really pretty, I become best friends with her for like five years. <laughs> five solid years before I realize we should be in love, and I should like learn her full name. And, uh, another thing I do anytime I'm on the train and I see a couple arguing, I always get right in between. I was like, hey, really, sir? She doesn't deserve this. Come with me, miss. Let's get off at the next stop. And she never leaves, but I try every day, and that's all that matters. And another thing I do, like rom coms, anytime I see a couple kissing right outside of a bar, I always try to be like the black dude in the background of those movies who just kind of walks by and goes, hey, no, that's all right. <laughs> 
keeps walking. I want to be that guy. I feel like if he was on the train with that couple, he'd be like, hey, why are y'all fighting? Can't y'all see y'all are in love? And then they kiss, and he just goes, no, that's all right. Walks off. I want to be a black extra. I can shrug, I can eye roll, just, you know, what the hell, that's crazy, that's me. It's a paycheck. I went on an audition not too long ago, I'll leave you with this. And uh, It was an audition to be the voiceover of Ghetto Squirrel. I'm not proud of it, like, it was real sad. I looked at the script and it was like, man, these nuts is crazy. I was like, oh, just, I got this shit. <laughs> and it was weird, because what it said was, it said what we're looking for is somebody like somebody from the zebra, like the zebra from, uh, from Shrek, or the, or the donkey from, I don't know. Zebra from Madagascar or the donkey from Shrek. And that's Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy, You're not living up to that for one. It's also a weird way to describe a character. But that wasn't even the weirdest part, because the next line just said, this squirrel didn't go to college. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> First of all, no squirrel went to college. <laughs> That'd be pretty amazing. That squirrel would have spectacles. <laughs> That'd be very cool. All right, you guys have been great. Thanks everyone else, peace. <laughs>